Hi guys, it's me Leon here to do a daily word with you guys. I don't know about you, but I've been through some dry spells and I'm wondering where's God? When's he gonna answer my cry, you know? And then one day I just fall on my knees and cry to him and he just changes everything around and lets me know that I'm not in control, he is. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay guys, so let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word and your truth, Father. No matter if my gardeners are out there making noise, Lord, we're just going to continue to hear your word, Father. We pray, God, that you would open up our ears and our hearts, Father, and we'd be attentive to you today, Father. In Jesus' name, thank you for this opportunity to serve you, Father. Amen. Okay, let's see. Sp spiritual dry spells, causes and cures. I'm willing to bet that most of us have experienced spiritual dry spell. Have you ever experienced one where it's like you feel like God's not there and you're wondering when he's going to come around and sometimes it just feels like you can't feel him at all? That's a spiritual dry spell. A time when we feel far from the Lord, unfruitful, unmotivated, and maybe a little lost. Feelings of closeness and communion with the Lord faded. The fiery desire to love and serve Christ dwindled. Maybe that's you now. Maybe you're wrestling with the host of emotions that accompany a spiritual drought, anything that confusion to doubt, empathy, even depression. Three causes of spiritual dry spells. If we are Christians, if we have been free from condemn condemnation, united with Christ, the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in our souls. Then how is it we still experience these dry spells? What causes that? How do we get through them? Let's look at three common causes and their cures. Harbored sin. In Romans 6, 2, Paul asks, How can we who died to sin still live in it? The answer is miserably. We cannot serve two masters. While we know that our old self was crucified with Christ, so now that we no longer are enslaved to sin, the battle between our flesh and our new spirit is still very much in play. In Romans 6.6, 6, the sinful part of our nature that is wired to respond to temptation is still driving force in our lives every day, guys. If you're feeling far from the Lord, if you no longer feel drawn to spend time in His Word, if you become hardened to serving Him and maybe even hardened toward other people, odds are that there's a part of life where still sinning and reigning is the sin is free. Sin is always in the business of dis distancing us from the Father. Sin turns our focus inward instead of upward, and eventually downward into shame and despair. The cure of this cause is simple, repentance. We have a painful yet beautifully clear picture of this in David. David was a man after God's own heart, who at one point sank deeply into sin that was he justified murder as a means of hiding his indiscretion. Sorry about that. Look at this prayer of repentance in Psalms 51, 11 through 12. He says, Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. David prayed for the Lord to restore the joy of his salvation because it had been lost to sin. He begged the Lord to cast him away because he knew that the sin has the power to divide and cut off. If there's any area of habitual sin in your life, put it to death. As a believer, the cost to you is too great to continue it. The cost to your Savior was too great for you to ignore it. As John Owen simply put it, anyone be killing sin or it will be killing you. Number two, our hearts are fickle. Our emotions are not to be trusted. In fact, in Jer Jeremiah goes to say, for us to say that our hearts are deceitful above all things. Oftentimes when we feel far from the Lord, when we don't feel God's love the way we used to, it's because we mistakenly put our trust in feelings about our faith rather than facts. What God's word says about our faith. That what Proverbs 3, 5 means when it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. 
The Lord is unchanging, immovable, and steadfast. The same cannot be said for our emotions. That is why we're commanded to trust him with all our hearts rather than trusting in our hearts to understand him. The cure, in this case, is scripture. If this cause is ringing a bell, you're probably spending more time dwelling on your thoughts and feelings than you are on the word. Turn to passages like Romans 8, 31 through 39. Romans 8, 31 through 39. And remind us of the binding love we receive through Christ. Nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ, not even in ever-changing moods and affections. Look at John 4.10, where we were reminded that our salvation came out of God's love for us, not our love for Him. Our emotions didn't save us. And they are not what will sustain us, guys. God's Word is living and life-giving is able to breathe new life into a dry and distant soul. Like the psalmist, make the Lord's testimonies your delight and your counselor, not your emotions. A forgetful memory, fear of the future, or bitterness over the past can suck our soul dry and harden the heart. Through fear, there comes bitterness in two different states. They spring from your same root. If you find yourself with a fearful and bitter heart, it's that you've gotten the goodness, you've forgotten the goodness of the Lord. In the case of fear, you've forgotten all the Lord has already seen you safely through and his promise to never leave you nor forsake you. In Hebrews 5, 13, 5 and 6, says in God's word, in the case of bitterness, you've forgotten the Lord's mercies woven through your past pain and has power to redeem your lost days. Joel 2.25 In Deuteronomy 4.9 lays out the final cause and it's cure, beautiful, cure beautifully with a warning we would all be wise to heed. Only take care and keep your soul diligently. Least you forget the things that your eyes have seen and least they depart from your heart all the days of your life. If we aren't careful to remind ourselves of all the Lord has done for us, memories of his provision, protection, grace will fade, along with them, fruitfulness, confidence, and joy in the Lord will fade as well, guys. When that happens, it's no wonder we feel a sense of emptiness. To combat this cause, we give thanks listing everything to the Lord, all he has done for us, and it helps us all to call mind his goodness and his faithfulness. We should again be like the psalmist that says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, and I will recount all your wonderful deeds. Washed by living water. Sorry, guys, we're almost done. Regardless of why you find yourself in a spiritual dry spell, whether because of harbored sin misplaced trust in feelings, a forgetful memory, or any other cause, pray for your soul and your heart. We know that God alone can remove our heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. That is why it's so important that we preach the gospel to ourselves every day. Sin becomes less tempting. One more I think on its daily weight. The more I meditate on Jesus as Lord of all, the easier it is for my heart to submit to his lordship. When I remember the grace I've been given through my Savior, it's more difficult for fear and bitterness to take root. It's hard for the soul to dry out when it's daily washed in living water of Christ, crucified and risen to save it. Father, I pray that everyone made it through this, that everyone got something out of it. I thank you for the dry spell that you take me out of, Lord, that you took me out of, Lord, that you take me out of all the time when I'm feeling that way. And I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that they would talk to you. You are their Father. Please come into their hearts if they don't know you, Father. Heal and restore the joy of their salvation, those who are longing to be healed in mind and body, Father. Thank you for this opportunity to serve you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Well, guys, I love you guys. God bless you guys, and take care. And remember, keep up the faith.